Hey guys, Adobe has just released an update December 2018 for Lightroom Classic CC 2019. So right now we're gonna have a look at seven brand new features. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So I've got something exciting for you today. Uh, right now it's December 2018 and Adobe's just released a new update to Lightroom Classic and that would be the CC 2019 variety and we're going to jump in and have a look at seven brand new features. One of the other things that they've done is performance updates. So if you're working on a 4K, 5K monitor, you're going to see your grids are going to come up faster. And also the previews work faster inside of panoramas and HDRs. And that brings us to our very first feature we're going to talk about, which is HDR panorama. Whoa, you might say. Uh, wasn't that released like last month or the month before? Well, Here's the thing, it was released and the parameters were set very tight and it didn't work at all on most of the DJI stuff and a lot of other things It wasn't working correctly. Now it is and to prove it to you, I'm going to jump in and show you 66 images that I handheld on a Sony a7 III in Hawaii just a couple of months back and let's see if we can put together an HDR panorama. So I'm going to take the very first one and I'm going to scroll all the way to the end hold down shift and select it notice we've got 66 images selected and these are raw files so all we're going to do now is right click and we're going to choose photo merge hdr panorama all right so here we go we've got 66 images merged together and, uh, and we can see they're in a spherical and we've got them cropped so all we need to do now is just click on merge and obviously i'm going to time lapse this a little bit because <laughs> it's going to take a moment and there we go, a 66 image HDR panorama. This is a massive file and it shows an incredible amount of dynamic range. Feature number two, and this is a big one. We can now customize the order of the panels inside of the develop module. So we go to develop. You'll see your panel sets over here. And why don't I just collapse them so we can just see them all. In fact, if I hit the command and little arrow thing, we'll collapse them all at once. And we can see there's the order that they've always been in. So if we go up to the top here and just right click, we can choose Customize Develop Panel. And then we get this panel. So maybe there's things like effects. Maybe you like to have the effects more up the top. You just simply select it and drag it. And notice that you can go through and you can change the order of any of these. And just for fun, we'll take the transform. We'll put that up there. And if you want to turn any off, we can do that to hide the panels. Although that particular part's not new, we could have right clicked over here and hidden any panels at any time, which you can do anywhere in Lightroom. But now that we've done that, uh, if you wanted to go back, by the way, you would just hit default order. And then we just hit save and it's going to restart. We can go over here and now we can see that the order of these has now been changed. New feature number three, snap to grid in the book module. Why does this matter? Well, let's just go here. We're going to go to a full page. And then what we want to do is go down to guides and make sure that we turn on page grid. Now with the page grid turned on, click on here. You don't see anything yet, but let me grab a photograph. Let's grab this photo here, drag and drop it in here. Now, if we go to size it, we just simply grab the corner here and we can resize this. Now notice it just kind of moves around willy nally or whatever the word's supposed to be. So what we want to do is be able to snap it to the grid. So first thing we do is turn on the page grid, which we can see, then we change from snap grid to grid. And why does this matter? Well, let me show you. If I go here and I right click and I want to add a photo cell, let's drag another photo in there. And then while we're at it, why don't we add another one? Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Notice how it snaps to that grid now. So if I wanted to lay these out and do something interesting with it, I could do that right here. And notice how that just kind of snaps. So it makes it easier for me to take the other ones and align them and resize them. And notice how it just kind of snaps. And then by doing that, it makes a cinch to do this kind of work. Let's put an outline around there. And so that helps tremendously with layout. Feature number four, 
auto import to collections. So if we go down here and we create a collection, I'm just going to call it my images. It could be whatever you want. So I just called it my images. And then if you ever use the auto import feature here, where you go down here and you choose auto import, this is basically a watch folder where you drop photos and then they come on into Lightroom. You could always just add them here and they would just get dropped into the library. But now we can add to collection. The list of collections will come up there. And now whenever anything's automatically imported, it's going to go into that collection or any of the collections that you want to choose. Number five, presets. We've got two things to look at here in the presets. Okay, so if you have presets that not everything in it is compatible with this version of Lightroom, meaning maybe you brought in some older presets from a previous version, or you're using a different cam camera calibration or something like that, you go in the presets module, they don't show. We can now make them show. All we need to do is go up under Lightroom Preferences and see this option here that says Show Partially Compatible Developed Presets. Turn that on. We go down here and you'll see now they're in italics. But look at that, we can actually click on them and we can use these presets now. Even though all the settings are not going to copy across, it'll do what it can. Speaking of presets, number six, if I want to create a brand new preset, and just for fun, I'll do something silly like this. And I want to create a brand new and I'm going to call it create preset and I'm going to do BW strong, which I already have. In the past, it just created a duplication. Now, if I hit here, create, brand new dialog box. So now we have three options. The first option is to replace. So have you ever had that when you want to tweak it a little bit and then you've got to get rid of the old one and then replace it with the new one. So now we can just update those presets by just hitting replace, saves a whole ton of the time. That's what I see really good about this feature. The other two options, of course, is if that name's taken and you want to create two different ones, you can duplicate it, rename them later or whatever you want to do. Or you can choose rename, which means that, hey, this name is taken. Do you want to just uh, rename what you were about to call this? You know, this is not going to work. Give it a new name. Done. And feature number seven, the very last thing you do when you leave Lightroom is you click on leave Lightroom. And then you get this. Do you really want to quit? Well, of course I want to quit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have chosen exit. So this might not be a big deal to you unless you've actually been using Lightroom for years. And, you know, can you say nag anybody? Nobody likes a nag. So what we can do is choose don't show again. And then next time we quit, it's just going to quit Lightroom and that dialog box is going to go away. Now that can always be reset from the preferences. I'm going to show you another little tip here about updating. So let's go up here. You, if you want to update Lightroom, you go up under the creative cloud, you go down to Lightroom classic and you'll see update. If you don't see this update, what you do is you click up on the top here and che check for app updates. And this will force an update and now it will go back to the cloud and it will look for all the newest updates and bring them back. Don't just click on it without reading it because there's a new option that says auto update. Now, if you turn on auto update, it's not just going to update Lightroom Classic whenever a new version comes out. It's going to update everything in your creative cloud. So if you want that to happen, that's great. If you don't want that to happen, don't check that box. Otherwise, you're going to find Premiere and everything else is going to update without you realizing it in the background. And for me, I don't mind updating things like Photoshop and Lightroom, but things like Premiere Pro, I never update that when I'm in the middle of a project. Same with After Effects and also InDesign. So I'm not going to have auto update on because those ones I want to sort of have control over. So what you need to do if you're accidentally turned on auto update, like I've got going here, turn your preferences on and then go down here, turn off, always keep Creative Cloud Desktop up to date, turn that off. And now you're not going to have those automatic updates happening all the time. So I've got a question for you. This auto update, is that something that you would use or is it something you're going to have turn off? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments and let me know why. Oh, by the way, I just finished creating a comprehensive title on Lightroom Classic. It's the biggest uh, training course I've ever done. It's 130 something lessons. It's 14 hours of lessons. So it will teach you Lightroom from the ground up all the way to advanced with all kinds of tips and tricks and things like that in there. Now this is great for someone who's just starting out because it's going to teach you Lightroom from the beginning and teach you the best habits and the best practices from the beginning. So you're not going to run into problems later on. However, if you are more experienced, there's a lot of new tips and tricks, new features in there, workflows, uh, workarounds to the common questions. I got 
I polled uh, Photoshop Cafe, got over 300 responses and worked that into this course to make it a real world course for people actually really working in Lightroom. Check out the link underneath for that. By the way, if you like this video, smash the like button into dust. Thanks for watching guys. Oh, one other thing, go to the website. I've got written a uh, super guide that covers all these new features and all the other features of Lightroom. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe.